but towards the recurrent side of the books. And there you have it, Dr. Kamau Thoge, Dr. Patrick Njoroge, Dr. Chris Kipto, Professor Njuguna Ndungu, and also we have the Acting Commissioner General of the Kenya Revenue Authority, that is RISPA Simiu. That there, you see both the monetary side of the economy, the fiscal side of the economy, and of course, we have the agent who is tasked with mobilizing tax revenue, that is the Kenya Revenue Authority. In the next financial year, the government is targeting to mobilize about 2.8 trillion shillings worth of revenue, a staggering amount of which 2.5 trillion shillings is actually attributable to ordinary revenue and the remaining is, um, is mobilized still by the state. So there we have now the Treasury top money men they have been called and taking their final photos before he gets into his motorcade and makes his way to the National Assembly. A couple of financial years back we had um, uh, then Treasury CS Uhuru Kenyatta indicating that he would walk from uh, the National Treasury all the way to the National Assembly that was just walking you down the memory lane to some of the scenes we have seen um, in this exercise not too far back. So now we have the Treasury CS and his Principal Secretary taking their final photos after which they make their way to the National Assembly. This comes at a time when the supplementary budget two for the current financial year has just been tabled. That took place on the afternoon of yesterday. The chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, that is Honorable Dindi Nyoro, did that. And this morning we have seen the books for the supplementary budget two uploaded. And the indication is that the national government spending is being slashed by 31 billion shillings, of which I should indicate recurrent spending is actually going up by 38 billion shillings, but development spending is coming down by 7 billion shillings. And that is how we are arriving at 31 billion shillings. And shortly we'll have... Um, Treasury CS getting into his vehicle to make his way to the National Assembly. There you can see uh, the members of the fourth estate trying to get a final best shot of this. Let's see how he makes his way there. And we get to the National Assembly so that we just cross over live and listen to Kenya Kwanzaa's debut budget speech on this day, the 15th of June, 2023. You can rightly see there, he's now making his way. And you might remember that um, the switch to the Volkswagen happened during the Uhuru Kenyatta era, if you do recall, when there was a lot of talk about the need for austerity measures to cut back on the expenditure on guzzlers, which was uh, really uh, chastised by Kenyans at the time. And I don't know how this has been thought. Now we are seeing a different make there. You can see CBK1, that's the governor of the Central Bank of Kenya, also part of the entourage. So we keep an eye there as we continue with our conversation here on set. I was asking my panelists what are some of the surprises they do anticipate. Uh, and we have listened to Robert Orero from ISPAC as well as James Mulili from uh, PKF Churchill. Are there any surprises you think might be coming this afternoon? Well, I uh, don't see any surprises uh, on the spending side. Uh, the reason being we have gone through some of the numbers. Uh, two days ago, Parliament approved uh, through the Committee of Supply each and every individual vote that uh, any ministry, department of or agency will be able to receive. So from that perspective on the spending side, we may not get any uh, surprise. But having said that, I um, just had a cursory glance at the supplementary budget to uh, documents. And uh, what is of concern to me is uh, there's been some revision on the consolidated fund services to the tune of 178.5 billion uh, shillings. So that to me speaks of uh, macroeconomic framework might be um, uh, might be changed a bit, at least to factor in this increase in the consolidated fund services. We all know that. Uh, the numbers under consolidated fund services is given as it is. Parliament does not have an authority to tweak either the interest payment, debt amortization, debt repayments, uh, or anything within the consolidated fund services. So they are just given as it is. So we are at a scenario whereby that number is increasing by 178.5 billion. Obviously it will have implications on the revenue side 
and also on the deficit. So it could either be uh, uh, an, some increase in uh, projection in the revenue side or also deficit increasing by that uh, amount. So that is something that you might see on the broader scheme of things that uh, the macro framework might change at least to absorb that uh, particular uh, adjustment. Robert, let me come to you. And uh, twice now we have seen President William Ruto read the riot tax to the Kenya Revenue Authority, the commissioners not, not less. And the question being asked is, when you look at the revenue projections for the next financial year, what's your assessment of them? Are they overly ambitious? Are they just moderate? Well, Gillian, uh, that's a good question because um, let the, I think the starting point is uh, the Budget and Appropriations Committee report, um, which indicated that uh, they think that the revenue estimates are quite ambitious, yeah. um, and that's underpinned by a slowing economy in terms of uh, you know the, the growth has been projected to be slower than early anticipated. Now. In absolute terms, you're talking about a growth of about 371 billion shillings. Yeah. Um, the joke is that they, didn't, they need to be collecting a billion shillings every day for the next one year. More. A billion, a billion more, more every day. Yeah. And as it is today, they do about 150, 180 billion um, or thereabouts. So it's, it's a really tough one, uh, Julian. Um, 2.5 trillion in terms of ordinary revenue, you're talking about 200 billion a month. That's going to be a, a really tough one. And like we were discussing earlier on, the, um, the, the proposals in finance bill proposals target about 211 billion. So there's a question about this uh, about 160 billion uh, additional. Where is it going to come from? And that's why Jul uh, James was talking about uh, an aggressive revenue authority. So clearly, um, it's going to be a mixture of things uh, an aggressive revenue authority, perhaps m m more use of data, uh, expanding the tax base. That's what really I see. Yes? And uh, we have had uh, the Revenue Authority indicating that we are cleaning up, we are cleaning up the VAT register so that we are sure whether we are op really optimally collecting VAT or not. The, if you read the tax expenditure report, it tells you we have a VAT gap of about 38%. James, do you see that as one of the pockets which could help unlock this uh, a billion shillings extra per day? Uh, yeah, yeah, indeed. And um, uh, this discourse we're having about uh, uh, the items. Yes. Uh, you see, the challenge with VAT uh, over the years has always been the susceptibility to manipulation. Eh? Because remember, it is um, the mechanism is output uh, versus input VAT to yes. determine the VAT bill. Eh? And uh, uh, I think there's been a tightening of the screws. Uh, these are initiatives that have taken time and they have been phased out. Started with uh, VAT inconsistency checks between the, by the Revenue Authority just to confirm that any input VAT that is being claimed, they can see a corresponding output declaration on the other side. Uh, it went ahead with a lot of mandatory requirements, some of which were not grounded in law, yeah. just to make sure before you <coughs> claim any input VAT, then the KRA was uh, pushing for uh, an agenda where really the output VAT has to be declared. Then we are now transitioning to uh, some form of um, uh, intellect when it comes to the ETR machines. The previous ETR machines were just ETR machines for what they are. Yeah. There was no way the data was being relayed to KRA. Uh, so there was that now progression to these uh, ETR machines that are now integrated integrated to the, uh, to the accounting systems and there, there is almost a real-time relay of the invoices to KRA. There is the talk about, uh, actually if you go in to file your VAT return, there's actually an option not yet active, but where <laughs> where your VAT return by the time time you're filing it yes. will be out.